We have problems. We have now this, somebody said, well, whose side are you on? Why should I have to choose whose side I'm on? I'm for right, whatever it is. Did it bother me to see Minneapolis? It absolutely turned my stomach. Does it bother me? Yeah, but do we know how to fight for it? Will we march? Will we stay silent and write a check? Say so we write a check. We've done something. We invited them over. We took them to a game. But we're going to march and do nothing. But march, march, march. So we want justice. And we want peace. And while they're marching and saying they want justice and want peace, if we just stand over here and be quiet and write a check and say that we do something and say that we have a friend look like them, we're good. And now we feel like we're comfortable. So this is why it is so important for an event like this to happen. Because guess what? Where it should continue is where you have more conversations that you can feel comfortable saying things like we say. And if you think you're diverse, here's what I challenge a lot of people with. Tell me the difference between cornrows, braids, twisty plaits, and dreadlocks. <laughs> <laughs> We ask them, are we really diverse? Are we ready to talk about it? We would love to, but how do we start? We start with an event like today. And when this thing started off uh, in talking about these things, people said, let me, let me qualify myself again. I worked for 30 years in the Charlotte Mecklenburg Police Department, retired after 30 years. They hired me back, now they won't let me go. This is my 35th year. Um, I worked 800 murder cases, didn't solve them all, but every one I took to court, I won except one. So Discovery looks at it all and said, that boy is almost a genius. But here's what they also discovered. They discovered, and a lot of people discovered in Las Vegas, that when I was so upset about Eric Gardner, like everything I see on TV, I become that person who, I'm not going to march. I'm not marching. My, that was my granddaddy, grandma, and all them. I'm not marching. I'm going to educate myself. So I want to know what in custody death is because somebody, gonna, somebody has classified me as an expert because an officer involved shooting is nothing but a homicide. Think about it. But you have everybody on TV who's from the DEA, the FBI, the U.S. Marshals, all talking about my job that they didn't have to done. But it makes you feel good. So somebody found me and now, imagine this, I am working for Charlotte Mecklenburg Police Department, but attorneys hire me as an expert witness under my company, McFadden Solutions LLC, to testify against police departments and cities who shoot people and kill people. I can't go back to Memphis right now. I love my, I can't go to Memphis. Okay, we I'm not going to go to Florida for a while either. And so, and when I walk in, and may not be able to go to a city here in North Carolina, because I'm, I'm going to have to go against a friend of mine in court, but he's wrong. And I already say, you're wrong. And they're going to use me to say that you're wrong, but because we want right. And that's what we have to do. And these are the kind of things that we need to stand up and do. Um, let me tell you why I think this is important. Because... On June 22nd, let it be known, everybody else is going to know, Baton Rouge, Louisiana called me. And they said, we heard that you have a program. And my program started after me and these young men got together, and, and my program is Cops and Barbers. Some heard about it, somebody don't care about it. But anyway, we started Cops and Barbers. Our last chief was getting his hair cut, and his barber says, we need to do something in the community. He calls another two barbers, who are both convicted felons, and say, uh, we need to do something. The chief sends me up. Only thing that he did the entire time to start this organization is text me, Gary, talk to Gene. Gene has two people he wants you to talk to. Y'all have a meeting. We have a meeting over chicken wings and some iced tea at a place called Freshwater. And four guys created something sitting at a table. They had, they know their limitations. I knew my limitations. I'm deep in the community, but it's not as deep as they are. So they go back and hear things, and then we put together these forums, and we listen to people talk, and we give them a platform to talk. And after they talk, we learn a lot, and we take, we have real takeaways. We don't, we do not do the meetings that you all like to do. You, know, you come to this meeting, and then some guy is going to 
you got to put yourself in a group, group one, group two, you go away, you come back, and then you have these chalkboards with these sticky things, and you label it and you start talking. It ain't working. How many of you have been in a week? And you put these strong points and other points and places to go, and you do nothing with the meeting but go away. And that's what happened also when we put cops and barbers together. We, we didn't have that problem. But the White House was uh, working on a project, and they were doing great, and somebody was riding my car one day from the White House, and they looked down and said, what is this? I said, it's a project I'm working on. We need that. That's the missing component of what we need for the police department, 20, 21st century policing for the president. So we have this meeting with the president. We don't know nothing about what we're going to do. So February comes, we're going to have our first forum. Nobody told us that Super Bowl Sunday was on that same Sunday. We just put together. <laughs> And we had the forum, 250 people came. All the Super Bowl, sorry. Three hours before the Super Bowl. <laughs> so we have this thing going, and then all of a sudden the president calls us, and here's, here's the problem that I tell everybody. What are you going to do after the day? The day is a good day, but what do you do after the day is important. We go to the White House. We have this great, we talked to 200 law enforcement agencies. I got a nice little picture and all this stuff, and nobody called me except one agency. Mm. When they call me, we launched it into their city, and they're doing well. And that's how we start. And it goes back to, what do you do after you take that step? So we laugh when this thing happens. So I, and I've been to the White House a couple of times, and I, I have done every presidential detail since Ronald Reagan for security. You know, Sister Hillary on Monday. So uh, the president, so I, when Baton Rouge happened, they called me and we talked about it on June 22nd, and they're like most people, well, let us look at this and let us talk about it and let us vet it together. So you got to have that croissant, you know, breakfast and all that stuff and the orange juice and have all that and you have the, the charts and you got some dignitary coming in and telling you all this stuff. And they said, we'll get back with you June 22nd. Well, they never got back with me. And then some police officer ran into Alvin and Alvin, you know, resisted or whatever he did. And Alvin died and guess what? That Rouge became what it was today. Now, when this is going on, I feel guilty. So I reached out to Baton Rouge and haven't got that email back. Then the White House, I reached out to the White House again because I have this little email that I can send to the people. And I said, hey, if y'all need some help, just kind of like say, ringing my bell, like you all doing here, I can probably still help you. Well, you know, the same thing, professional, you know, in campaign mode and everything, blah, blah, blah. And that was two days. Two days passed. It was, and I showed somebody an email. Thank you, Gary. Glad that you're doing well. Hope that the family is good. You know how we do those emails. Three days later, hey Gary, can you come to the White House and help us? I will forever carry this email. No, I can't. I'm doing something in Greenville, North Carolina. I'm launching my, my project that I think is good. It's not a showcase. It's not for the bells and whistles. It's not check your box. Like this could be. I have to step out there because, you know, I don't work here. So you know, check a box and say, we had a meeting. And we listened. But did you really listen to what is happening in the community and how each of us feel? No. So this is what's happening across America. So I would say, if you want to do more, have more of these, and have open, honest discussions about how you feel. And that is the problem. We have these meetings where some guy that comes in and he tells you this, and you rip the chart off and you tape them on the wall. And, okay, we got six here, we got six there. Well, tell us what you and your group discuss for 15 minutes. And then you get back on your plane, and you go to your city, and guess what? Nothing happens, and then we're still upset in America. And that is what we need to understand, that it takes forum platforms so I can vent. Because I can tell you this, somebody in here now don't feel the way that you do. And they may look at you a different way. And I was telling this is how things start. You and that person have a little conflict. Maybe at the water cooler, maybe in the bathroom, in the parking lot. You're trying to pull out, he's trying to pull out, or she's trying to pull out. They take those parking space, and guess what happens? You go home and tell your spouse. And when you tell your spouse, that's going to be the conversation every night. And after that conversation gets so bad that you come home upset one day, someone will say, what kind of car you drive? What kind of car she drive? Where does she work? And then you're going to have a confrontation in the parking lot, and then you're going to have an active shooter 
Yes, it did. And did you have an active shooter protocol? Yeah, probably not. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. okay. Have one right? Yeah. How many people know that they have one? Why? They have a Bible. You can have it, but does everybody know about it? The ushers at the door know, the two guys at the front know, but when it happens, you have no idea of the same how to get out of this room. Act the shoot. So you can have it in the notebook and you put the policy together, but what have you done? Nothing. And that's the same thing that happened in America. We have rung the bell at this issue, and I keep saying that because when I leave here today, I may never come back, and never see Cleveland, Boston. But then when something happens, say, well, now we need to put something together and have training and we need to talk about it and we can do everything else. But what am I feeling still about how I feel about my coworker who doesn't look like me? And we have these animosities and we have these discussions inside with our other co-workers. And it is sad. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Thank you. I, this is, say thank you again for being here. So, so compelling to hear you. 